When the sun is going down, this is the perfect time to set out to find one of the most elusive snakes in the desert. He's talking about the candy cane of the desert, the Sonoran coral snake. Now the odds are stacked against us. This is gonna be a very difficult find, but we are determined to get this snake. It's time to bring a little nature in your face. Nature in your face! In the vast desert landscape, finding a coral snake is like playing Where's Waldo? But in this game, Waldo is subterranean and rarely comes out to play. Coral snakes have a wide range in Arizona, inhabiting nearly the entire southern half of the state, yet it is almost never encountered. There are many colorful, harmless snakes in the desert that can be mistaken for a coral snake, such as ground snakes, sand snakes, and the shovel nose snake. King snakes and milk snakes are other banded species that can be confused for the venomous coral snake and are often killed due to their resemblance. This is a perfect example as to what Jeremy and I were talking about when it comes to confusing venomous and non-venomous snakes. So if you live out in the Southwest and you encounter a snake in your yard, if it's a rattlesnake, you're not gonna confuse that for a non-venomous snake. They have that very loud, annoying rattle. You can hear it from a mile away, kind of like your mother-in-law. When you hear her, you just get out of there before you have to deal with her. Coral snakes, not so easy to identify, particularly when you compare them to the non-venomous banded snakes that also are in the area. This is a long-nosed snake. It has the bright colored bands. To make it even more confusing, the yellow touches those reddish colored bands, just like on the venomous coral snake. Now, two things are gonna happen if you encounter this in your yard. You're either gonna wanna kill it because you confuse it for the coral snake, when actually this is just a little harmless snake that controls a lot of the lizards and other things that run around in the desert, including in your backyard. The other problem is, you might confuse a coral snake for a long-nosed snake. If you look at the snout of this uh, long-nosed snake, it's very light in color. If this were a coral snake, it would be solid black. Also, coral snakes, the rings on the body completely encircle the snake. If you notice here, kind of a yellowish color, the bands do not encircle the body. Now, you can take a stick, you can flip the snake over, easily identify it. Now, rather than killing it, if it is a coral snake, my advice to you is call a company. There's plenty of them in the area. They'll come out, they'll remove it for you. Maybe put a bucket on top of it so it can't get away. You don't have to kill it. You don't have to worry about it harming your kids or your pets um, in your backyard. The heat was intense, and it was at this moment that we began to understand what a Toll House cookie felt like in the oven. We had been searching for nearly a week and still no sign of a coral snake. But like detectives on the case, we came across our first real clue and we knew we were on the right track. In one particular area, we found several thread snakes, which is the coral snake's main food source. And with plenty of prey, it was likely the coral snake would be on the hunt. We had spoken with a park ranger the day before and asked if he had found any coral snakes in the area. We were somewhat discouraged when he told us that he had only found one in his 33 years working in the desert. This was our third trip to the desert in hopes of finding the coral snake, which made what happened next one of the most unforgettable moments in all of our travels. Snake, snake, is that a coral? Where? Where? Dude, it's a coral! No way! No way! I, don't, I didn't go. think we were going to find him. Go. <laughs> yes! Oh my Ooh. gosh. Careful. Oh, don't oh. drop him. Where Ooh. was it? Check it out. We got the coral snake. Where was it? Yeah. Where was it? Man, he's just cruising right through. I just saw like a candy oh, cane in action. It. I do not Crazy. believe we got oh. this. I did not think you were ever going to find no. one. Are you kidding me? I, this is not one I would have expected to find. Oh my oh, gosh. Am. The Sonoran coral snake. Like, hey, we can't let Watch it go. Don't let him get There's a hole right there. Here, here, here. Don't let him go. Oh yes! Oh my gosh. Amazing. Dude, dude amazing. Great find. Great this find. This is epic. All right, so we are excited, like freaking out excited, because we mm -hmm. just found the Sonoran Desert Coral Snake. This is a very hard, rare snake to encounter, to come across in the wild. We've been looking for it for a long time, and here it is. I mean, I'm just elated. Heck yeah, this might be the first and last time we ever even encounter this snake. That's because it's fossorial. It spends the majority of its time underground. It doesn't have to come above ground. Its main prey is the thread snake. Thread snakes, another fossorial snake this guy loves to eat. He'll come up, occasionally feed on a lizard or two, maybe come out during a heavy rain, but for the most part, even if you live in this area, you can go your entire life and never 
see the Sonoran coral snake. Now you'll notice the snake hooks. We're not playing around with the snake. It is a cousin to the cobra. It is an elapid. It does have fangs and potent venom. People do not get bit by this too often because you would have to pick the snake up. Put your hands on the snake or try and lick it like a candy cane for its fangs to get in you. It's not going to be able to strike like a rattlesnake, so you're not going to walk by and get tagged by a coral snake. But if you did get bit by this, you are going to the emergency room. Now, there's a little poem you might be familiar with. If red touches yellow, it'll kill a fellow. If red touches black, venom lack. The problem with that poem is there are other species of snakes that look very similar to the coral snake that inhabit this area. If you're not 100% certain if it's a coral snake or a harmless snake, the best advice I can give you is just leave it alone, don't touch it. Because if you get bit, you're in big trouble. Yeah, safety first always. Um, we're not messing around here, we're just picking this up so you could see it. Educational value. We're going to release the snake as soon as we're done here. Wow, what a great find. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. I mean, that just awesome. made my night. Hope <laughs> you guys enjoy this beautiful snake. The episomatic coloration of this snake serves as a warning to predators that it is venomous. Contrary to popular belief, this snake does not have to chew to envenomate its prey and therefore should never be handled. It possesses one of the deadliest toxins of any North American snake, yet there are no known fatalities attributed to this species. Its evil reputation is undeserved and if left alone, it poses no threat to man. Anyone afforded the opportunity to witness this strikingly beautiful snake in the wild has no reason to fear it as long as it's admired from a safe distance. Consider yourself lucky to catch a glimpse of an animal that most will never have the chance to see.